What is going on guys? Music Mike here, AKA Chase Freedom. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the one, the only, Taxi Music. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what it is, what it isn't, and whether or not it's right for you. Okay, so now that I've officially signed my first deal through Taxi, I wanted to make this video because I think there's still some misconceptions about what Taxi is. And since I signed that first deal, it basically makes me an expert because I've made it in the music industry. What's that? That's not how it works? Uh, okay. I'm joking, obviously, but some people think that. And also a lot of people think that Taxi is a scam. And let me tell you, it is not a scam. So let me tell you what Taxi is not. Taxi is not a music library. You do not sign music to them. They don't place music for you. You don't make money directly from Taxi as a company. So Taxi brands themselves as an independent A&R service. But the way that I like to think about them is a combination of a couple things. And the first thing is in their name. They are the vehicle to get your music from your computer to the ears of the industry people. Whether that's music supervisors, music libraries, record producers, whatever it is, they act as the middleman. And that's where half of the value of their service comes from is because they are so reputable. They've been around long enough and they employ people who have worked in the industry to build up their reputation. When a library or a music supervisor comes to Taxi and wants to run a listing because they're looking for X music, those people already know that Taxi is only going to forward them quality stuff. And this is where the whole argument of, well, why can't I just send the music directly to those people myself? Number one, it's gonna take you a while to figure out what that company needs. And number two, there's a lot of companies and music supervisors out there that don't like unsolicited music. And realistically, there's a lot of groundwork that you have to do yourself to research the libraries that are looking for music in your genre, you know, find out whether they work exclusive, non-exclusive, what their splits are, etc. And the most important thing, which is where the second half of the value of Taxi comes from, is that if you send that music out yourself, if it's not something that they're looking for, or it's not up to par, they're not gonna say anything to you. 99% of the time, they're not gonna say anything to you to help you figure out how to make your music better or what it is you're missing. But with Taxi, they're screeners, which are the ones that you submit the music to, they listen to it, they specialize in the genre specifically that that listing is for. They're they're gonna give you a breakdown of why or why not it didn't get forwarded to the company. And in my experience in the three years of membership that I've had with them, this review and critique process has only gotten better. So the second way to look at Taxi is it's an education tool as well. There's tons of information out there. You know, there's a couple of YouTube channels, a few people that I see on Instagram that run courses on how to make licensable music for sync, you know, how to contact all these people and get your start in the business. But I've gotten a lot of great advice specific to my tracks that I wouldn't necessarily get from a overall generic course on sync licensing. So that kind of individual one-on-one -on -one feedback from the screeners is where the education value comes from. On top of that, the community of Taxi is actually amazing. There's a lot of really successful members on there. They pop in and out of the forums, they jump on the Taxi TV episodes, which you can also get on podcast form. And there are just hours and hours of knowledge to go through, which you can go through free by yourself. You can go on the taxi forums, go on taxi TV and watch. But if you're an active member on the forums, you're also gonna learn a lot. You might wanna ask a question about a specific listing that just popped up or you know, get some feedback on your track before you submit it. And I've connected with some really cool people on there that they just wanna help one another out. There is no competition here and everybody just wants to see each other win. And that's the kind of stuff you really can't put a price on to be honest. So now let's talk about whether or not Taxi is right for you. And the only caveat here is I'm gonna be speaking specifically from a producer composer standpoint, not a singer songwriter standpoint. I'm just not familiar with that space, but I know that there's a lot of great opportunity on there if you are a songwriter. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to think about is something that a lot of members make a mistake with going into their membership. And that is you have to be humble. You can't go in thinking, well, I've been making music for whatever many years. I know that my stuff is good. Therefore, my stuff should be getting placed left, right, and center on TV and film. Eh. 
Couldn't be further from the truth. Writing licensable music for TV and film is an art form in and of itself. There's a lot to be learned in that realm. So if you're somebody that's coming from a beat making background or a typical song format background, there's gonna be a lot of stuff that you're gonna have to learn. And it's gonna be frustrating, but that is the whole purpose of having that $5 song submission barrier because it's encouraging you to not submit stuff that you are not confident is going to get forwarded. Now you can definitely expect a lot more returns than forwards, but again, it's just, you have to look at those as education tools. For me to pay five bucks to learn how to improve something that I'm gonna later fix and get placed somewhere is a no brainer to me. And if you don't have five bucks to invest in your music career, which is really a business that you're starting, this is not for you and you really need to rethink your whole approach to how you're gonna make it as an artist or a composer. So don't go into this expecting, well, I'm gonna submit these 10 tracks that I have. They're all great. I'm definitely gonna be getting placed left, right, and center on keeping up with the Kardashians because it doesn't quite work that way. But I was there. My first submission that I ever did was for a luxury SUV commercial that a New York ad agency was looking for. I was following Taxi for a little while. I saw that listing pop up and I thought, God, I have the perfect track for this. This was 2013, signed up, submitted the song, and it got forwarded. I thought I struck gold. I'm like, this is it. I made it, I made it. But ultimately never heard back from the ad agency. And then after that, I proceeded to get return after return after return after return on the tracks that I was submitting. And like many first time members, I got frustrated. I got angry. I sent emails telling them, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. This track is 100% good to go. And I just wasn't, I just wasn't open-minded to hearing what they had to say. That first year of membership that I had, I didn't really learn the stuff then. I've learned a lot from it now looking back on it. And the number one thing from that is that the amount that you put into taxi and listening and learning from everything is the amount that you're gonna get out. After that first year, I didn't renew my membership. I was angry with my music career in general and life changes, yada, yada, yada. Fast forward to 2018 and I signed up again. This time a little more open-minded, still getting frustrated sometimes, but I started to pick up a lot of things that I was continuously doing that were stopping me from getting forwarded. Things like not enough developmental art, too repetitive, track was not in the same vibe as as the reference tracks for the listing. So I had a few more forwards, wasn't super active in 2018 to 2019, renewed again in 2019, started to become really active again. And in late 2019, I heard back from my first music library. They were interested in one of the forwards that I got for a hip hop instrumental cue. And one of the music library staff reached out to me. They asked to hear more of my music. So I scrambled because I realized that Oh my God, I don't have enough. I don't have enough stuff that I think is ready and is up to the quality of that track that got forwarded. So that's another mistake is that you have to constantly be writing. I scrambled, I put together some stuff that I really wasn't confident in and just kind of hoping that they would see my potential, but ultimately I never heard back from them. Didn't get discouraged though, kept writing. And eventually in April of this year, 2020, I heard back from a sync licensing company, specifically a company that pitches tracks to be synced to commercials, video games, trailers, and they wanted to sign my track. I am still currently waiting on my first placement there. Again, once you sign something to a library, doesn't mean that you've got a placement yet. It could be months, could be a year before you even get something placed. So my number one suggestion is if you're interested in it, go on to the forums, go on to Taxi TV. They have a whole bunch of episodes that are specifically for first time members or people that are thinking about joining. And realistically, just be prepared to be humble. Be prepared to keep working on your craft, on learning how to make the tracks that work for TV and film and really understand where the value in a taxi membership comes from. And of course, if you're really interested in writing music for TV and film, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be posting weekly videos on how to do that. And you can go ahead and check out some of my previous videos that I've already put out about this. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions again, make sure to ask them in the comment section. And I look forward to connecting with everybody. I'll catch you in the next video.